Well, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has condemned Monday's suspected Israeli airstrike on an Iranian consular annex building in Damascus. His statement reiterated that diplomatic and consular premises must be respected in accordance with international law. Here's the Assistant Secretary General for the Middle East speaking at the UN Security Council. I reiterate the Secretary General's condemnation of the attack. The inviolability of diplomatic and consular premises and personnel must be respected in all cases in accordance with international law. The sovereignty and territorial integrity of member states must be respected in accordance with international law. The rules-based international order is essential for international peace and security, which this Council is mandated to maintain. Well, Iran blames Israel for the attack in which at least 13 people were killed. Iran's Revolutionary Guard says one of its senior commanders was among those killed. Mohammad Reza Zahidi was a top general with Iran's Quds Force, which oversees covert operations over, uh, overseas, uh, abroad. Now, several other officers were also killed. Well, Israel hasn't commented directly on the Damascus attack, but here's Defence Minister Yoav Gallant speaking on Tuesday. We are currently in a multi-front war, both in defence and offence. We see evidence of this every day, including over the last few days. We operate everywhere, every day, in order to prevent our enemies from gaining strength and in order to make it clear to anyone who operates against us, all over the Middle East, that the price for an action against Israel will be a big one. Well, Benam Ben Talibloo is a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, where he focuses on political and security issues related to Iran. Uh, welcome to DW. Um, are diplomatic strikes or sites like the Iranian consulate in Damascus, are they legitimate targets for attack? Well, it's a pleasure to be with you. It's an excellent question and one whose spirit could be answered by the UN clip you had just played about uh, safeguarding the relative immunity of all sorts of diplomatic and consular facilities. There's only one major problem or caveat or footnote to that, which is that the government of the Islamic Republic commenced its hostility 45 years ago nearly with the outside world by literally violating that diplomatic immunity and creating this sense of hostility and using its embassies and missions and cultural centers and consular offices abroad as fronts for terrorism or recruitment or kidnapping. And what you've seen most importantly is that Iran used the civil war in Syria, uh, the fractious, chaotic uh, situation there to not only support the, the murderous Assad regime, but to use that situation to function as a bridgehead into Lebanon to create yet another front uh, against Israel. So. Uh, if there's anyone here violating international norms and rules, there is a linear line between cause and effect that needs to be uh, transcribed, to be assessed first. All right, but my question was, are they a legitimate target? Your question seems to be probably not, but they started it. Uh, there's cause and effect here, indeed. Okay. Norms so die when both sides transgress them, uh, but you have to understand what leads to the transgression of that norm. It would be a little bit unfair to see the retaliation and not the cause behind it. And how could Israel be so sure the consulate was housing such high-value Revolutionary Guard figures? Well, this is actually uh, really the, the, the critical story behind the strike, which is that for several years now, even in the pre-COVID era, you've had Iranian Ministry of Intelligence officials, even the heads of these ministries, uh, talking about the relative penetration of Iran's security services uh, by uh, foreign intelligence services, assumedly even the Israeli Mossad. You've seen the Israelis now for a little bit under a decade be able to pinprick and target areas where there's munitions, where there's training facilities, where there's depots, and where there have been in the past uh, senior Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps officials uh, in Syria. Uh, so this essentially leads one to only one conclusion, which is that the Israelis have been able to, either with signals, means, or with human intelligence, or a combination of both, be able to pinpoint and geolocate where these officials are and when these activities are taking place. You, you, you seem to be implying that it's not just uh, Israel that has, has penetrated um, uh, Iran's uh, intelligence uh, network in this way. Uh, presumably, you're thinking that the, the Americans might be in there as well. 
Uh, presumably, but the thing that was formally appoint, uh, appointed in that, I think, 2018 or 2019 comment uh, did go back to Israel. So the thing that was formally appointed after there was a comment about foreign intelligence services uh, did go back to Israel. But one has to assume that any other foreign intelligence service that is interested uh, is also monitoring this situation as well. So how much will this uh, uh, attack against Iran's revolutionary guard, how will it... Um affect Iran's ability to threaten Israel? Well, if you look at the biography, for example, of someone like Brigadier General Zahedi, he's held a series of posts, he cut his teeth in a famous conflict that was a formative moment for the Revolutionary Guard Corps, which was the 1980-1988 Iran-Iraq War. He was the Tehran base commander for the IRGC. But most critically, he was the Quds Force chief for the, Israel, for the Syria-Lebanon theater, uh, which is basically the front that supplies, trains, equips, Lebanese Hezbollah, which is Iran's most successful proxy. I think the Israelis were looking to kind of disconnect the connective tissue by going after this individual, as well as other Quds Force members of his team. So this is not akin to solving the problem. It's akin to, I think, handicapping the problem. And if you look online right now, there are some comments talking about this individual, Zahedi, as almost the second Soleimani, who was Iran's chief terrorist mastermind and had really architected uh, Iran's regional security strategy in that part of the world. And so it's interesting you bring up uh, Soleimani. Talk to us then about Iran's likely response, because uh, the General Soleimani, uh, who you mentioned there, also taken out, um, also assassinated. And at the time, Iran talked about uh, responding uh, where and how and when it was ready, same as, is, is, as it's talking about now. So where and how and when is that likely to happen, do you think? Indeed, and even between the Soleimani strike and this current strike, uh, there was another senior Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps official killed either in early January or late December, also assumedly by Israel and also in the Syrian theater. And the Islamic Republic did respond to that uh, in a multi-pronged way, both in Iraq uh, and in Syria. And Syria claimed to strike ISIS targets, uh, but in Iraq ended up striking the house of a Kurdish businessman that is alleged had some kind of ties to the Israeli government or to the Israeli Mossad. So Iran's evolving missile capabilities are increasingly being used to publicly adjudicate and respond to these conflicts. That could be one. Uh, there could be more or resume targeting of uh, U.S. diplomatic facilities, military facilities in the area. Uh, you've already seen reports of a strike on a, or an attempted strike, I should say, by a drone by an Iran-backed Shia militia on a base in Syria. There could also be more kind of broader support for the multi-front war against Israel that the Islamic Republic has already provided. And then there's always, of course, uh, the cyber domain, which one has to keep their eyes on as well. And when you look at Iranian media today, they're talking about this response as a potentially multi-front response. OK, good talking to you. Thank you so much for uh, talking us through that. Uh, ben Arm Ben Talibun from Thank the you. Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Thank you so much. Thank you.